what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chris Hillman, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, David Robinson, David Wayne Foster, Dick Earth Skeptic, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik86, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life is Short, Maria Neeland, Missouri Bear, Muted, NA Literalist, Nathan Thompson, Nyby, Rob H, Skeptic936, Steve ALM, Texas Mike, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, The Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Unbelievable Productions, and Windrider. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we've got a whole bunch of people in our Discord live stream, so I'll raise the mic on them while we set up for today's live show. I think that's the way to go homesteading, to be honest with you. Oh, 100%, man. I'm all about it now. So, but when you, when you get a piece of property, say you buy some property. I know when I was in Alabama, I met this kid in Home Depot, and he was telling me about his house he's building. So I was like, you got to get permits and everything? Like, Chris, he goes, permits? I said, permits? He said, well... You got to run sewers and stuff like that, right? He goes, listen, my family's been on this land for over 100 years. We don't freaking report shit. We build and that's it. They don't. They, they, they're just freaking out in the country. They build their house. They run their plumbing. and They don't answer to nobody. Oh, they pay property taxes, right? I don't think so. These dudes were... I was like, what are you talking about? You can't just build something and... And, and run a sewer system and plumbing, you got to have permits and it's got to be inspected. He was like, okay, if you say so. I was like, really? Well, you at least want to have your electrical inspected. That could result in a fire. Or well, at least I understand, have a license. I understand what he was talking about. It's his land. It's been their land for years. Why did they got to pay anybody anything? That I agree with. How the hell should I pay anybody anything? That's not what taxes were about. That's not how this country was founded. Yeah, <clears throat> I understand, and I, I, I'll, I've played that case before too. I've labored that point, but, but really, uh, at least when you get into a more of a populated area. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Then you have to, like yeah. I said, you guys were back in the sticks, man. They were in the sticks in Alabama. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the sticks, whatever, but um, it turns into a public safety issue. Um, now, I mean, there's obviously way over regulation um, in, the, in the United States and the cities with building permits. Um, sometimes it's way more hassle than it's worth. Um, yeah, I do jobs with that that are not permitted. Unfortunately, you know, it's whatever the customer wants. Morning, Nathan. Morning. Hello. Good morning. Morning, hey, tenth. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. Hey, Neil, I think we would have to live in the sticks at this point, considering how much of an impact the COVID has had in America now and in the world in general. What impact? Hey, is that Sleeping Warrior? 
I don't know. It's the 10th one. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. Good morning. Morning. We're all living in the sticks now, I hear. What's going on? Now, I was telling Travis about a guy I met when I was living in Alabama that his family had land for hundreds of years there. They don't report anything. They build the house. They don't report anything. They do all the plumbing, all the electric, and don't pay no taxes, nothing. Yeah, we call them politicians. What'd you say you call them? We call them politicians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they put hey, on a pretense, but they don't do anything paid? they have us do. <laughs> is that true that politicians get paid even after they retire? They still get their salaries? Lifetime politicians, oh, yeah. I heard. Oh, oh that's a problem. Oh, yeah. then. They, that's you go true, serve anyway. one term in Congress or the Senate. Uh, and you have full, unbelievable retirement with health care, everything. Now, their health care is totally different than anyone who's under them. And so when they were doing the health care revisions eight years ago, uh, when Obama was in place, everyone said, well, good, then just give us the same as your health care. We'll agree to it. And they, they wouldn't get near that. <laughs> You know, they're supposed to serve the people, not be above the people, not have better things than the people. And whatever they have, the people should have access to. And that's not the way it is. Getting into heavy politics now. No, it'll soon be over. Missed you yesterday, 10th man? Yeah, I had to go take, check out a, a sailboat in San Diego. So I went over to my parents' house, spent the night and had breakfast with them and then took off. But I caught some of the show. I didn't catch it all. Did it end well? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Because <laughs> of the way it's scheduled now, normally, or uh, like in years gone by, I've, uh, I had some times where I'd, I'd do the after show and literally immediately release it on the same channel. Um, whereas obviously that's changed over time. And the biggest change to my schedule came with COVID. So that altered my schedule and changed the way I diced up the channels. All sorts of different things changed as a result. But now I'm back to like having a, a set, you know, a set plan. Um, what happens now is the members and indeed me get the pre-show and the after show immediately after it's been done. So typically what I will do, uh, or what I used to do, was I'd upload it for the second channel and it would come out maybe eight hours later or something like that. Um, and then after COVID, it was about 36 hours later, or maybe a bit less, 30 hours later, whatever, a considerable time later. Now, for me, when, when I set a video to premiere, I can't watch it either. I mean, I could. I could go into various different st states in the creator studio to, to enable me to watch it while it's set to premiere but that's a faff in other words it's not as easy as just watching it on my ipad right mm -hmm. so typically i'd wait and watch it with the audience now my time's becoming more and more limited as well since my wife's gone back to work after being on maternity leave for our second kid and therefore i've got a bit less time but it's very useful I could use this for a plug, actually. Sub become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member if you want this facility. There you go. There's my plug over, so it's not brazen. Anyway, um, so as soon as it's finished, I then upload it and set it to members, which means it can play in full. So if you're a member, you just watch it from the beginning, watch the pre-show bit, this bit. And then when you get to the live show, which chances are you might have watched anyway, and then you can scrub through it to the after show and then just watch that bit. So that's typically now what I'll do. I can watch it at my leisure while things are going. I can pause it, which you can't do. You know, you can't fast forward it, at least with a, a premiering stream. Anyway, 
Uh, so that that means that it's it's sort of changed what I remember about the show because I haven't been forced, <laughs> you know, I haven't been forced to sit through it chronologically um, by way of watching it on the second channel uh, as a premiering stream, which is what I used to do before I set it up so that members got it 36 hours earlier or whatever it is. Um, but it means I get it too. So like I say, I, I typically will scrub through to the bits that I'm like, I, I want to make a note of that particular bit. I'll watch that bit and then I'll get on with my day. <laughs> Whereas, like I say, I'll know, that means I've got a very sort of short memory now in terms of what actually happened yesterday. Because what's going to happen today, because I probably will still watch the premiering stream that goes out today, but that's yesterday's, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yesterday morning. So it's like a day and a half right, later. Right. So you lose track of what's actually happened. Yeah, so I knew that even though I wasn't on the show, I could catch it today when you replay it. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's good in a way because I think releasing it maybe eight hours later, there's a good chance that people won't watch it. They won't re-watch it because they've watched the live show earlier and it's like, what's the point? But if you've watched the live show and then the following evening, you get a brand new piece of pre-show and after show sandwiched with a show that you watched yesterday, having just watched something completely different, the chances are, yeah, you might wait, you might remember vague bits, but based on my stats, people will stick around for about 20 to 30 minutes, which is fantastic. You know, that's a really good watch time. But it means they're not, they're definitely not sticking around for the entire two and a half hours on average. Yes, there are people who will. But it means that there's a good chance that even in the uh, pre-recorded live show, as it is, as live, um, that particular chunk of the uncut and after show is still going to have some new bits to, you know, some some of the people who've even watched it or watched sections of it, as the case may be. So, you know, it just means that people get a bit more out of the material. Um, so there we go. That's the way it's done. But I can't remember what happened well, yesterday. I... Long answer to, I don't know what happened yesterday. I can't remember. I'll have to watch <laughs> on tonight's show on the on the second channel to find out. Well, the, I will. <laughs> I, I do, and I will, because there's different kinds of people who watch your show. I, I watch it from a student's point of view. So I, I have a notebook. I take notes. If I hear a, a new comeback to an argument, if I sense something is uh, going to uh, make an old argument stronger, you know, I pay attention. I rewind it, listen, get my notebook out, write it out. So I can always go to it. So I'm, I'm here more as a student on the subject, wanting to learn and sharpen my skills. Other people watch the show just for various reasons. One would be entertainment factor, you know, to all kinds of reasons. I guess we'd have to ask, you know, people why they watch the show to figure out all the reasons. Um, I mean, there's a couple of broad camps, people who love the show and people who love to hate the show. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty broad, eh? Well, the people who I, – I didn't even go there. <laughs> I didn't go where the ballers go. How should I say trolls? They're not normies, so. I think one of the challenges I have, Nathan, with sharing your videos with people that I'm trying to expose to using logic the way you all do in explaining Flat Earth um, is either – I'm not saying language barrier, but – I don't know if it's the accents or the terminology. Like I have to find myself prefacing a lot of things. Like whenever you guys are referring to R, they're like, what the hell is R? I'm like, okay, that's radius. Like it supports, you know, your, your, your physicality that you need a number two. And, you know, I have to find myself explaining all these things, like the terms that you guys use, the fallacies and, you know, ad hominems and all these are really powerful terms of logic that have helped me kind of curtail and bring the discussion back whenever I'm sitting down with my friends, having them sit through your, your podcasts and, and they just want to interrupt. And, that, and by they, I'm referring to the globe turds uh, who can't, I guess it's the cognitive dissonance that, that makes them just backlash and, and interrupt. And I have to find myself pausing the videos. Um, and so it, it's surprising to hear you know, you say that the average watch span is 20 to 30 minutes. I don't know. That's, that's impressive. Incredibly impressive. I mean, I like to, I like to tout that stat quite a lot. 
because <laughs> I'm because it, it's built up over time. It's not always been the case. Far from it. But I remember when I first at, found out about Watch Time, I read what what YouTube were hoping for. Given that at the time, this is a few years back, that the average watch time on YouTube was about three to four minutes, and they were hoping that each and every YouTuber would achieve maybe seven to eight minutes. And then around about that time, they introduced a, a sort of a, an algorithmic part of YouTube in terms of the advertising, where if you're over ten minutes with your video, then you'll be able to put mid roll ads in. So that encouraged people to make slightly longer videos rather than two to three minute videos. They extend the watch time across the whole platform. So I knew that YouTube are aiming for, you know, I'm sure in an ideal, absolute ideal world, they wanted 10 minutes, but they're realistically shooting for six to eight and asking people to produce 10 minute videos, knowing people will sort of click off towards the end. So given that's the case, knowing that I'm getting sort of, in, in some months, I get 30 minute average watch time. On the second channel, I'll preface that, it's not on both channels. But on the second channel, I look at it and I go, "That's that's as good as television." People will, you know, on 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 a general TV watching session, people will watch one program and that's half an hour. You think bloody hell, people will sit down to half an hour on average of my show, which means yeah, there's people clicking off after ten minutes, which is also fantastic. But also people watching the entirety of the show to get that average so high. So yeah, I'm very very proud of that statistic, especially as it's the N- thing Nathan. YouTube want. Nathan, you, you keep saying watch time, but I reckon most people just listen to your videos, which is different really, isn't it, if you're deciding your metrics? Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's true for most YouTube videos, actually. If you watch anything about YouTube production, they'll, they're quick to point out that most of the information taken in by anybody who's watching a video is actually auditory anyway. So you can have all the snazziest video in, in the world, but if you, if you don't sound clear and concise with the audio, that's where people will click off. But yeah, you're right. On on the whole, ninety percent of this show is is not visual. Yeah, there's screenshots to keep it looking pretty. But you know, on ten percent of the occasion, it is very much visual because someone will have a presentation or something that needs to be shown, or a piece of text that they're reading from to prove it's actually a citation, not just making it up. So yeah, there are occasions where obviously you absolutely must have that visual part of the show. But yeah, for the for the majority of the time, no, you don't. It's just your it's just auditory, and I'm sure that. For the sake of that 10%, some people will, are willing, and I know they are, to just download it as an MP3 and listen to it as, quote-unquote, a podcast. Because you just, you know, even when there is something visual, so long as the person who's discussing that visual thing has it as a reference, the auditory bit will still make sense to an audience member without the visual thing. But for you to discuss it with someone else, you still need to actually present it. And for those watching live, they want to see that it's actually being looked at and discussed. I have a question. It can, but then I've got to, I've got to crack on setting up a few live things in about one minute. So go ahead, and then hopefully you'll talk about yourself for five minutes before the live show. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, how many minutes constitutes a view? Do you know? A view is just a view. So if you click on, I mean, I don't know how this works in terms of them ignoring. There was a period where they'll literally scrub off views. That seems to have stopped, but they've got a buffer now. So they've got, uh, I don't know how many hours it is, but I think it's like the certain proportion of the statistics that they'll release to you. And it's an averaged figure that's an estimate and all the rest of the, we- the weasel words. So they don't have to make it look like they're just scrubbing off non-views. But I know there is a, I don't know off the top of my head, but there is a, a proportion, say, if you watch for less than 10 seconds. For the sake of argument, I don't know what that figure is. But that really wouldn't count as a view. You you might have accidentally clicked on it on your iPad with your right hand and then immediately clicked off it. Well, they wouldn't count that as a view. You've got to have a certain amount of actual watch time to, to, to count it as a view. Or interaction at all. So, uh, I, again, if you're commenting and you think you're not leaving a view, you are because um, you're interacting with the material. So that, that's going to be logged as, as a view because you've gone onto the material, you're on the, the site for a given period of time to write out your message, you know, you're know, subject to all of the things that YouTube want to advertise to you and promote to you in that period that you're on their site. So the reason watch time's their primary statistic is because, not, not views, I'm getting there by the way, it is because that's what they want. They want people to stay on the site for as long as humanly possible. That's what YouTube want. The longer you're on their site, the better, right? On their website, which is youtube.com. And if you're there, they're happy. If you're just there watching a video, adding a number one to the statistic of that video, and you watch for five seconds, click off, and then go to eBay to go and buy stuff, then that's not good for YouTube. So the view numbers are kind of inconsequential. It's how long you spend on the web the website. But ultimately, yes, they're stats. They are going to ignore 
a certain number of actual clicks on a video because it, it really should not and does not count as a view if you've been there for two and a half seconds and then clicked off uh, onto a different video that you've then spent 10 minutes watching so yeah but I, I don't know what the if there's a I don't they don't release their algorithmic data so this is all speculation based on what other people have assessed and it changes so I've assessed it. I watch it very, very closely. So I can say this, and I can say that there was a time that YouTube would scrub it off after putting it displayed to the public. Now, all of that has changed in terms of how it's presented. But I'm sure the back end of what's happening is identical to how it always was. But after a day, basically, they give you the actual statistics for each and every video, which must be carefully um, monitored and accurate because they're selling stuff to advertisers off the back of it so I'm, I'm fairly confident with the statistical analysis YouTube provide and whether or not they count someone who's clicked on for five seconds that you're asking about or not is kind of irrelevant because they'll have pegged it so that their stats are accurate basically anyway I've got, I'm going to run late if I don't start pressing buttons so talk amongst yourselves okie dokie all right excellent yeah thanks for that my, yeah, the reason why I was uh, <clears throat> asking the question is because of the autoplay feature. And so you'll have <clears throat> probably these folks who pay extra money to have things autoplayed or to have their, their video come up on autoplay. And then I was thinking that probably gets some views. Autoplay so view... meaning... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, autoplay meaning you said that you say play it when it comes on automatically, or is it something more than that? Autoplay, uh, essentially, after the video that you've chosen to watch is over, you get about five seconds um, until another video in a similar category plays. Oh, and usually it's a baller okay. video. I don't think they play flat earth videos in those kind of lists. I think YouTube bans them. Yeah, after I watch a Flat Earth video, they usually throw a Glober on there like, uh, oh, what's that freaking dumbass's name? Um, Huey ripped him around. Pro prof uh, Professor Dave. Yeah, his videos come up a lot. I see what you're saying. Uh, of similar type, uh, autoplay, got it. Correct. Yeah, so I unknowingly or unwillingly give views, I think, to these baller jerks. Well, they're all, they're everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> like leeches. Even, even, even when they lose their R, they keep their ball. I don't think it's helpful calling them jerks, is it? Would you, what, what do you describe a person who acts like a jerk? Well, what's acting like a jerk? How long have you, you been on these shows? Sorry, um, you, you cut out there. How long have you been listening to these shows? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Since lockdown All right. started. All right, so uh, if you've been on the show or listened to the show for a number of times, uh, they come on and they act like jerks. So that's why they're called jerks. I don't have an argument against that. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date 
with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Tenth Man, Chocolate Sane and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Vietnam. Good morning, <laughs> Flat Earth Debate. Good morning. Any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curvature? Not from Shelter Island Marina, San Diego, California. Uh, not from anywhere. <laughs> we do not the see habit. the geometric Hello. horizon. Hello. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello. 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 No, we can't hear you, Armin. No. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Good to have you. No problem. Hello. 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 Any? Where were we? We've only just started. Any evidence of axial rotation? No, no such thing. Any evidence of any movement at all? Except, of course, for earthquakes. That question rattles me, chocolate. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Any signs? If they, have, if, they, if they have a word, if they have a a word for what happens when the Earth is moving, which they call an earthquake, what, what is it doing when it's not quaking? Not moving. Moving Copy at vast that. speeds that are assumed to give us no effect. Oh, well, that sucks when it comes to like measuring them. Because if we're moving at speeds that give us no effect, how do we know we're moving at speeds? <laughs> well, we would have well, a yes. we would have a Coriolis effect. We would observe things seeming to deviate because we were rotating underneath them. In fact, they claim that proves we spin, even though we don't detect this effect. Nothing is drifting, and if it was seeming to drift because we were rotating underneath as it is asserted to prove that earth is spinning then earth would be rotating underneath things that are in the air and that would shorten flight times and have continents traveling towards hot air balloons as they hovered in the air it would have helicopters with the same effect as they hover things would come to them the ground beneath it would be moving for the person on the ground attached to the ground to look at the helicopter watching it seem to drift not actually drift because the guy on the ground watching the helicopters rotating underneath it, that's Coriolis effect and is claimed to be a proof Earth spins. So we're going to need to see some Coriolis effect. Well, there isn't any. And if there was, as I say, it would shorten flight times because Earth would be rotating underneath things. I had a... Doesn't that happen? If I can it. Go on. S -s -s one of you, Chocolate, go ahead. No, that wasn't me. I think that was Travis. Go ahead, Travis. Oh, yeah, I said that. I, hey, what's up? I said, uh, yeah, doesn't that happen? No. As I say, if oh, we had... It. Go on, Travis, go on. Oh, no, I just said, oh, dang it. Yeah, <laughs> if, it, if it did happen, if we had a Coriolis deviation from the ground, Coriolis is always going to be an observation from a spinning reference frame. So it's claimed we're observing things from a spinning ball Earth. And we see things seem to drift because they're not attached to the spinning reference frame. That is Coriolis effect in essence, but it's claimed to happen on Earth. Well, if we're observing things seem to drift because we're spinning underneath them, then that means things are having their flight times, like airplanes, drones, balloons, shortened because Earth's spinning underneath them. That's what would give you the apparent deflection that is Coriolis effect. But we don't experience this in any example. 
That's a problem. I had a conversation along the same lines uh, last year with somebody. And they said, well, the reason you don't uh, experience uh, the Earth's spin, because I brought up, you know, what about the winds? I mean, it'd be windy all the time if it's spinning west to east, a uh, thousand miles at the equator and 800 some miles where we're at. Uh, I mean, that's that's over Mach 1 speed. How come we're not experiencing that? He says, oh, that's because of the conservation of momentum. And I said, oh, you mean like in a car with the windshield and the roof and the windows up? He said, yeah. And I said, so now you're saying the Earth has a dome? Now we're enclosed? We're, we're not an open system anymore? We can't go to space? We're a closed system? And he just paused and looked at me because... If they go there, they, they have even bigger problems. And I said, gas doesn't bond. It's not stuck like Velcro to the earth. Sorry, buddy. You got north, east, and south winds to deal with, not just westerly. What on? The easy answer is we're not spinning. That's the easy answer. And if we were, as they claim, we would have Coriolis deviation. And that is Correct. immediately violated when they start talking about conserving momentum. Well, Coriolis effect is an observation from a, wait for it, non-inertial reference frame. So you're on something that has no inertia. In other words, you and the platform are as one, one reference frame, spinning together. But because you're on a platform that if you've got, I don't know, let's give an example. You're holding a bag. Yeah, so you're on a spinning roundabout and you're holding a bag. Now, as you put the bag down on the on the platform that's spinning, it's not spinning away from you or deviating in any way. It's just being put down on the ground. So there's no there's no inertia there. It's all one reference frame. But because there's things operating outside of that reference frame, i.e. you not putting the bag down on the platform that's spinning, but something that's happening over the top of you on that roundabout, like a plane, well, as you're rotating on the spinning roundabout and you look up at the plane, which obviously isn't attached to the roundabout you're spinning on, it seems to take a curved path because you're spinning underneath it. Right? Now, the plane isn't going to account for that, what you observe, that not actual deflection. The plane's not doing anything different to who it ever does. You're just observing it seem to curve because you're spinning underneath it. Now, it's claimed Earth does exactly that. You look up at a plane, oh, what do you know? It looks like it's taking a curved path. It isn't, it's travelling straight. But because I'm turning underneath it, according to the globe Earth rhetoric, I would observe it seeming to curve. That's Coriolis deviation. Always my observation from a spinning platform. Not what the plane does, not whether it's got engines, not whether it's slowing down or decreasing, increasing altitude, or completely stationary in the form of a helicopter, relatively speaking. Or anything else that's not attached to the spinning reference frame so you could have a roundabout example with the lamp post next to it the lamp post isn't attached to the spinning reference frame therefore the lamp post which is concreted into the ground definitely not moving can seem to drift because you're spinning underneath it so it's nothing to do with the things that aren't spinning it's only about you observing something whilst spinning so as soon as they say well the plane doesn't need to account for coriolis well planes won't be coriolis based in terms of your description of them because the Coriolis effect is only ever you observing something while spinning so who cares what the plane's doing oh it's got engines who gives a shit as I'm watching it from the ground seeming to drift that's caused by me acclaimed to be spinning underneath it well if I'm spinning underneath that plane then the ground is spinning underneath the plane and therefore the continent it's traveling to is coming towards it if it's traveling west shortening the flight times which does not happen so the causes of Coriolis effect, that would be you spinning underneath, will shorten flight times. And they're not shortened. Often they're longer in the wrong direction. For the globe, that is. So there is no Coriolis uh -oh. deviation. Go ahead, Travis. Oh, I just said, uh-oh. Now, do any of the five ballers that are in here disagree with anything you've just said? I, I disagree. Wonderful. Okay. In no what way? What, what's the Coriolis effect, first and foremost? Can you define it for us? Oh, no, I'm not going to debate. He just asked if we disagree. I, I disagree. I see. So Do you know what the name of the show is? Nah. Hang, <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to call him out on that one. 
You disagree. You're on the show, but you're not going to tell us why you disagree. That's why I asked him if he knows what the name of the show is. It's called Nathan that, that, Open that wasn't the Debate. Quest. The question was, does anyone disagree? So you've trapped me here. I didn't want to debate. I just answered his question. Okay, you just don't like it because it doesn't line up with your religion that we're spinning when I disprove it. Okay, so you disagree because it's against your religion. Fine. Yes, okay, Nathan. Well, you've got no rebuttal, so that's all you've got, I'm afraid. Anyway, shout out to FE News. Any energy gained from a presupposed moving Earth would be immediate, would immediately start being lost as soon as you left the surface. Yeah, that it must to have Coriolis deviation, FE News. But thank you very much indeed for the super chat. Absolutely spot on. Correct. Thank you. Can I can I stay on this with this guy just for a second? Uh, if you like, I I would like. Uh, if I disagree with something, it's either subject based or objective based. When you say you disagree with the Coriolis explanation you just heard, is that objectively based uh, disagreement? Or is it a subjectively based disagreement that you have? Well, I have a few. Um, I disagree with a lot of what Nathan's just said because I think he was being dishonest with his. Um, that wasn't my question. My his, question um, was: Is it subjectively based or objectively based? I don't think he uh, even understands the difference. He's already answered. Technically well, I, speaking, I don't, I don't hold on. Don't He's answered. He said he thinks. Sorry. He thinks. So it's obviously subjective. It's just his opinion. Okay. All right. So I, I, I want him is to that, say is that it, okay? not Arwen or you. So when you say you think, is that subjectively based uh, according to how you understand the word subjective? I think you're changing my point, really, aren't you? I was tricked Why into are you answering playing word games question. with me? He asked if anyone disagrees. He didn't say... If anyone disagrees, please give an explanation as to why they do. I'm asking that. Are you deaf? The you're, name you're of the show him. is Flat Earth Debate. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, Neil, stay, stay out of it. Please. Look, I understand what he said, but then I said, can I? And then he said, sure, if you want. I said, I want. Now, I'm asking you, address me, not him. Oh, oh sorry, 10th man. Um I think it's a bit of both subjectively and and is is that okay? I didn't hear you said subjectively and and then you went quiet. I, I said I said it's a bit of both subjectively disagree with him and objectively disagree with him. Okay, that's a good answer. So please tell me the objective part of your disagreement and we'll forego the Well, you the keep changing part. the goalposts to your 10th man. No, you just said... This is said a complete trap. It's a it's mixture like a... of both. And why... Look, I'm trying to be uh, back and forth in a very decent manner with you here. You just said it's a bit of both. I've, I'm I've not just said I don't that. want a back and forth. Okay, can... So it's not very decent of you, is it? That's why he matter. doesn't want it. What is this guy's problem? What is he talking about? I, I, I'm not asking for your feelings. I'm asking for your proof, which is I'm not objective. asking. So, you just go. said it's a bit of both. I want the bit that's objective. Can you please provide that, or did you make that up? I, I don't want a back and forth, 10 man. He doesn't is want to back so up what he said. What, what he means by that is he doesn't want to back up what he said. So can we move on? Yes. And now you're putting that words my into question. my mouth, Nathan. No, and now he's on a troll. You, you oh, literally means... just said you don't want to back and forth. I just heard you say it. What's the matter with you? No, he said I, he said I don't want to back it up. Oh, my bad. I was wrong. Go ahead then. Back it up. What, what's subjectively wrong with anything I said about Coriolis effect? Well, do you want me to go into the subjective first? N no, that's why Tenth Man specifically asked you about your objective opinion. Or your objective based objection, rather. Well, I've already said I don't want to back and forth, Nathan. Yeah, that, that uh, I translate I, into I, I can't it. back it up. Oh, so you well, changed so... the words? No, no, I asked you to back it up and then you didn't. So it's not changing the words, it's now me just saying something to clarify that you haven't backed it up after asking if I had misinterpreted what you said by giving you an opportunity to back up how wrong I was 
and you didn't. So now it's just a statement of fact I'm making. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Nathan. I Thank you. So moving on. Any scientific evidence of gravity? None. Just a word they made up for things that fall. How, haven't you asked all these questions before, Nathan? Are you going to talk when you're not supposed noise. to talk? You don't want to talk, remember? <laughs> is, that, is that scientific evidence of gravity? You, the, the fact that it's been repeated? An, <laughs> do you have an answer? Do you have an answer? Yeah, exactly, Chocolate. Because if maybe no, someone no, gave I, us, I, I us an, answer, an answer, we Nathan. would stop asking these questions. He don't want it back and forth, but he wants to answer every question. He wants to be the one asking the questions, not answering the questions, because he understands, at least at a fundamental level or a base level, that the person asking the questions is in control. Now, unfortunately for him, this is a debate. So you might have questions asked of you, but he doesn't want to answer them because he's got nothing but questions. Yeah, where we're at is he's joined a debate show to not debate. Uh, we have a full house right now. So trying to kind of poke and prod some of these ballers to come out with some answers to these housekeeping questions. Um, I would like to invite this gentleman to <clears throat> view the show on YouTube at Nathan Oakley 1980 and open up a space for somebody who's going to participate. Over. Agree on that. Agree. That's so I, subtle. No, was that, was that you, Travis? Kicking. Hold on, was that he's Travis? <laughs> that was so beautifully, beautifully oh, subtle. That was so beautifully yeah, subtle. Yeah, that was me. How beautifully subtle. What, what Travis has essentially just said is, you've got so little to offer that we'd rather just use you as an empty chair. <laughs> That's what he's just said. <laughs> oh, the games the ballers play. Come here with some decency and honesty and defend your ball with some manhood. Yeah, he asked if this was repeated. Yeah, it's still asserted. It's still a mainstream idea. That you have a force called gravity. You don't. There's absolutely no scientific validity whatsoever to this assertion. So we ask those of you who would call us the Flat Earth as science deniers for your scientific evidence of gravity. None has been forthcoming, though. Does everything really go down, though? No, some uh, stuff goes up. <laughs> that's what I don't understand, because I, I, I was listening to Chemo this morning, and they were claiming gravity is because things go down. So I don't think they understand this. Things fall down, go boom, boom. Yeah, fall down, Whenever go boom, Whenever I want to rest, I go down. Like, DJ Neo Shaman, who's on the panel? Shout out to DJ Neo Sherman for the super chat. He says, drop that hammer of truth, Nathan and Ballbusters. Globetards, be scared. Thank you very much indeed for the super chat, DJ Neo Sherman. Uh oh, well, if he's a DJ. Gravity, you drop that hammer of truth. If he's a DJ, he's the only one that knows what is spinning. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Record spinning, not the earth. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't mind dwelling on this. I mean, gravity is not exactly my favourite subject. You know, I just, I just find it tedious. It doesn't, doesn't disprove heliocentrism at a, a, a base level. So for me, it's like a tertiary thing, just a fairy tale, just so story that they've introduced. Well, like you said, it didn't even make the top three. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? When you listen to them, it's an always go-to escape route for them. Even when it doesn't apply to the argument at hand, all of a sudden they'll say, gravity. Well, what, what has that got to do with the subject? Gravity. Uh, what's your dog's name? Gravity. It's moving on to the next straw, man. <laughs> Your dog? Moving on to the next straw man. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Gravity. There's no, no. scientific Refract evidence for that. Refraction. No, I'm just acting like a baller. It's so silly. They never address uh, 
the question. They always have this thing called gravity, and then nah. they'll throw it in on the question like that about uh, any scientific uh, evidence in, in those fields. They'll just throw the word gravity because they got nothing, because there is no scientific evidence for those fields. Uh, that's so last century tense, man. They say black, dark matter now. Dark energy. That's the whole. I am thing. from the last century, Arwen. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> what is dark matter? Any evidence? You, any evidence? The distance to the sun. It's over there. Can't see it. I see it. Right. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Nope. Nope. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth? Nope. None of those. We'll never get an answer for that one. I could just I can speculate a lot about it. I have. Even yesterday I did a bit for a bit. But, what does uh, yeah. the word speculate mean? Uh, just thinking about it. So no evidence. Well, it's the closest we can get, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, now there is no uh, molten iron core, even in my uh, in my speculations. Really, there could be a lot of things down there, but there's probably not going to be a molten iron core. Although I am curious if there is like this pillar of fire somewhere in the foundations or something i don't know quick shout out to unitox femu who says but feathers going up and down wind or gravity any evidence of the r valley earth radius Back you got it r is proven every time you look at a ball and realize that everything has to be a ball any evidence that's that a very that's a very inflated argument Darwin. <laughs> Sp is. speaking of inflated <laughs> arguments any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon definitely no uh, 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 question about gas i was trying pressure. to make an argument for it but then i couldn't breathe anymore someone has a question yeah, for gas. Speak pressure. louder. Go on, Alan. Hello, everyone. Yeah. What is pressure? Force exerted on the walls of a container. Uh, what do you have any like, uh, like uh, equation for it? F equals or ma. Value? F equals ma. So that's still valid. Or is there a point to this? No, just that, like, if we don't know what mass is or we don't have acceleration, then how can we have the force? And how that's can we have the gas pressure without the container? <laughs> can you show us that? He gave As you the, the definition. Question? You asked for an equation. Yeah. Well, the just, equation like is math. Gas so who cares about that? Yeah, we asked but... about... Sorry, Chopper, yeah. I'm talking all over you. Sorry. No, no I'm just telling this guy later. Was... You asked for what pressure is. That's we gave you the definition. So if it what was do you the equation for? Oh, good. Thanks. That's all I need. So we take. You understand away. by the definition you can have a gas pressure yeah. without a container, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, if the Earth has density, and density is volume over mass, then, yeah, I guess we need to know the volume and the mass to have density. Do we? I don't know. When I go get propane, I just take a container. I don't say all those things. I just say fill it up. Oh, okay. Well, good. Try try getting propane without one though. You uh, cannot pick up that propane without the equation, tent man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, 
That I concludes know. housekeeping. I'd... Okay. The girl one. Nathan? Okay, he said go on. I guess he's done. I said that concludes housekeeping. Oh, okay. Anyone else see the common denominator in all of these questions and others when we debate Globers? When we press down for meanings and exactness to the words, it all falls apart on their side and it stands tall and proud on our side? Yeah, it does. Because we work on the really is level here, so words are not as flexible and convenient to us. Well said, Arwen. Oh, I really love the really is level. I actually gave him the wrong formula. I, I didn't give him the correct formula when he asked. Should have said P equals F over A. Anyway. Not that it mattered. The P point was, who cares about the P maths? The, the point sorry, was, say it again. I said the point was, who cares about the maths? When we're asking for a demonstration of gas pressure without a container, it's kind of irrelevant how they calculate these things. I don't even get why they always ask for the math. No, like why? <laughs> so they can about physics oh, well, here. Why do easy. you want a math? You know, what's that going to do? <laughs> I'll tell you. It takes you immediately into the world of abstract rather than the world of the physical. Yeah, yeah. Owen, how, how could you ask such a thing? You don't remember Rumpus the other day saying that the geometric horizon simply exists in math. That's, That's exactly right. Why. <laughs> That's why, because after mm -hmm. telling us that we don't see a geometric horizon, you can say, oh, but look, it's there in the math. Well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's been our point. It exists in the math in your geometry, but doesn't exist in reality. Right. I mean, it's not even the math relating to reality. It's the math relating to a presupposed spherical autographic view simulation. So it's not even really math of the earth when they talk about that. Well, I guess when you show up to the propane... No, no according to them, we can see it if we're up high enough. That's, that's the only thing. No, you can't. I, I think they got embarrassed. What? You yeah, what? you can see the curve, right? Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, contests that. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hello. <laughs> Let Arwin make his point. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Brian. Go on, Arwin, can you just make that point again, please? Make it nice and clear. Okay. <laughs> Right, yeah, there may be rumors going around that you're supposed to see the curve from really high up, but a while ago, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson made a very iconic statement about, yeah, you can't see the curve from very high up. It's gonna, you're going to have to be very far away because, you, yeah, it's just going to look flat on that freaking beach ball. He demonstrates this with a visual... By slapping it. <laughs> okay, did you have a not point to add to that? If not, I'm going to. Hold on. Hold on, Owen. Is that the end? Yeah, I'll, take that. I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so what he's actually doing is forcing both sides of the argument to reify the horizon into a physical geometric sphere edge. So while he's stating that the physical geometric sphere edge he's magically made you conjure the horizon into may not appear curved at that altitude, he's still, by way of holding a beach ball and telling you that you're reifying the edge of that beach ball into the horizon you view, he's utilised a very clever magic trick. He may seem to be conceding that that stuff is flat. However, he's demanding in his statement that you accept that the horizon is a physical geometric sphere edge as per his comparison, which he's got in his right hand. That would be a beach ball that he's describing with an ant one millimetre above it that cannot see the physical sphere edge of that beach ball. Ergo, he is demanding in his example that you can't see the curve of the edge of the earth, which is the horizon in his example. So it's a very clever magic trick on multiple levels. All right. That's another way of looking at it, and I, I do agree to that. It's like in the more technical sense, that is kind of what he do. Is he's he's reinforcing the presupposition and just saying you can't see it. 
Yeah, you can't see the edge of the curved Earth that is the horizon bending at that altitude is what he's actually saying. He just doesn't say it in the order that makes it overt as I do. He's wrong. So basically, he's throwing cold water on both sides just to stop talking about it. To, to make sure every, no, to make sure know. everyone understands that the horizon is a physical geometric sphere edge. Which it isn't. Black I Swan. See, I still see him as a pretty good hostile witness because when we're told things like, oh, we can see the curve of the earth from an airplane <laughs> that flies about 40,000 feet. And then here you have Mr. Astrophysicist, Neil Smoke Grass Tyson, telling you you can't see it from 120,000 feet. That's a bit of a contradiction, I'd say. Uh, I'd agree with you. Right? In 2019, I'd have made the exact same argument. However, now I would say to that same person who asserts they can see the curve of the Earth from a jetliner, you think the horizon is a physical sphere edge? Neil deGrasse Tyson is wrong. <laughs> right. it's, it's... Don't take long. Here we go. Is the horizon a sphere yeah. edge? Of course it is. Pardon? Of course it's a sphere edge. You think the horizon is a geometric sphere edge? Wow, you fundies with your edges. You think you've got the you think you can see the edge of the earth? Well, the water. Sorry, the water that you described as not being an edge, what, that water that's an arbitrary position that does, doesn't demark any, demarcate anything, how can that be an edge? The apparent horizon is an edge. The apparent horizon isn't a geometric sphere edge, though, is it? it you can see part of the geometric sphere, but just refracted. Sorry, so it's not a geometric sphere edge, then? It doesn't have geometric properties? It does have geometric properties. So the geometric properties would be that you can draw a tangent to it, then. Yeah, curved via curved ray touches the thing, the geometric surface at a tangent. Sorry, the, cur sorry, the curved tangent. ray touches the geometric surface at a tangent. A tangent's a straight line, not a curved line. Oh. You seem to be double speaking between a bent line touching a tangent point, which is a straight line. That's double speak. No, it's not a. Sorry, yes it is, I'll reiterate it. A hand wave's not going to work. He's just said a curved line that will touch the geometric horizon at a tangent point. A tangent point is a point that a straight line meets a curved surface. So we've got two problems. Number one, he's assuming that we're looking out at a geometric sphere edge. So this fundy in his bloody edge, you fundy globe heads with your edge of the earth. What a weirdo. Anyway... Besides the fact that he's got this fundamentalist religious belief that you can see the edge of the earth, he's also got a very real problem that he's got a curved line being drawn to it. He said that you can draw a curved line to a tangent point. Tangent point's got a straight line drawn to it, you moron. Do you know that curves have tangents? Curves have got a tangent point, and a tangent point would be a point that you've drawn a straight line to it. Yeah, so curves... Have yeah, sorry, was that a yeah, but, and then moving on? <laughs> oh, how sweet they concede. Yeah, that would be right, wouldn't it? So you'd need a straight line being drawn to that point then for it to be a tangent point. Curves have tangents. Yeah, they have tangent points. We've gone over this. Do you think reiterating your crap point that I picked up on and demolished is going to help you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Curves can have tangent points. They can have loads of them. And what is a tangent point? Well, it's a point. But a straight line's meeting that curve, isn't it now? So the tangent... So that's a not even a yes this time. It's a total ignorance of my point. Yeah, well, you don't... Expect yeah, well, yeah, that's right, Nathan. It's going to need a straight line to it. And you don't have one if it's curved. That'd be double speed. You do. You, do. you don't... What, an imaginary one? Because you can't see a straight line to it, can you? You can't draw a straight line to it, can you? Because apparently it's in the middle of the ocean. It's not demarcating anything and anything. So how are you going to draw a straight line to a point that's not demarcating anything? Well, if you listen, I will explain. Right. Okay, my question I'll repeat. So it's, it's definitely that that gets answered. How can you draw a straight line to a point that doesn't demarcate anything? If you let me speak... So curves have tangents. I didn't ask that. My question was, how can you draw a straight line? That's to a tangent point. The straight line is to the point on the curve. If that point on the curve is an arbitrary position that's not demarcating anything, how can you draw a straight line to that point 
that you can't see. Interrupting me. Yeah, I'm about to tell you, but keep on interrupting. Here we go. So curves have tangents. So the curve of the Earth all has all tangents all along the curve of the Earth. That's begging the question. Why are we begging the question that we've just got a tangent point already when we haven't actually got a demarcation point? You said we can't see it. So we're just going to beg the question that we have got a tangent point. No, don't start by begging the question, you pathetic little man. Right, so you, interrupt, you didn't listen, did you? Did yeah, no, I pointed out that you'd beg the question by just demanding the idea that we've got a tangent point when I'm asking a very specific question. If we've got a tangent point, that's a point on a curve that you can draw a straight line to, and you say the geometric horizon is an arbitrary point in the middle of the ocean that doesn't demarcate anything, how can you draw a straight line to something that's not being demarcated by anything? That's my question. You haven't answered well, it. The You're telling me about how geometry works again. And it's really amusing. I don't really need a geometry lesson when I'm asking specifically about how you can draw a straight line to something you can't see. A, a, a tangent to a curve is not just a random... So we're going to assume we've got a tangent to a curve rather than you addressing the fact that you can't see this point to draw a tangent to it. You're just going to beg the question again. Understand what a tangent is. So I'm just explaining to you what a tangent is. I do understand. It's a point where a straight line meets a curve. And I'm asking how you can draw a straight line to a point that doesn't exist. It doesn't just meet a straight line anywhere on a curve. It meets it at 90 degrees to the curve. That's fascinating. I don't need a geometry lesson. I'll ask for the fifth time. It's really clear to the audience that you're ignoring my question. If you're going to do some geometry, you're going to draw a tangent line, and that tangent line is going to meet a curve at a point, right? Now, that point, in the case of globe Earth and your fantasy that we're on a sphere, is a point in the middle of the ocean that doesn't demarcate anything. So how can you draw a, a line to it? A straight line, a straight line to be a tangent has to meet the curve at 90 degrees. So it's going to meet the curve at 90 degrees. Where's that if that point, according to you, is in the middle of the ocean and we can't see it? You can see it. Oh, we can see this arbitrary <laughs> position that you've told us very specifically. We can't see. It only exists in maths. Now he's a liar because he's telling us we can see it. Isn't that interesting? No, Rumpus, you've made it really clear on multiple occasions how much we can't see it. I was talking about the apparent horizon. No, you were <laughs> talking about the geometric horizon and how we can't see that. I've got clips of you saying it. I've got clips of AB Science saying it. I've got clips of Planner Walk saying it. I've got clips of Simon Dan saying it. You're all saying it. We cannot see the geometric horizon. And you're saying that you can do geometry by drawing a straight line, even though apparently what we've got to see is a bent line. But you're going to draw a point, and I want to know how you're going to draw it if you can't see it. Yeah, you can see the apparent, right? You can not apparent. Right, but... He seems to be now talking about something I'm not asking about. We're drawing a tangent point to a geometric horizon. That's its tangent point. And now he's going to describe how he's drawing it to an apparent point. No, mate. Geometric point so for geometry. Again. So the geometric horizon doesn't look oh, like a horizon. He's the doing a switch horizon it, Sorry, if it doesn't look like a horizon, how are we going to draw a straight line to it? Right, you don't have to draw a straight line like, to it. Oh, we don't it. have to draw a straight line to it. No, that's precisely what you must do if you're going to do geometry. That's what a tangent is. What do you mean you don't need to do a draw a straight line to it yeah you do no you don't sorry you don't understand that a tangent's a straight line then you don't understand well, that. i understand i do understand that very much oh uh, well then if you understand that to do geometry you need to draw a straight line why would you assert that you don't need to draw a straight line because the light ray is curved and... Well, then you can't draw a straight line. That's all that means. If the light ray is curved and your tangent point's not visible, you can't do geometry. Now, I'll just point out for the audience that while I'm saying this, number one, it's the death of the globe. You can't do geometry anymore. And number two, while I'm saying it, Rumpus is rumpusing the Discord server. Because this point, this moment, is where I highlight that if you can't draw a straight line to a tangent point, that would be the geometric horizon. You can't do geometry. Now, Rumpus knows he's fucked. Hey, what, will you? you won't let me explain. Won't let me... No, it's just because he said he won't let me explain about 200 times while I've just explained it to you, the audience. Feel privileged. This is the death of the globe. In order to do 
geometry, you require a tangent point. So your assumed sphere's got that. And you need to draw a straight line to it. And according to Rumpus, you don't need one. Yeah, you do. That's what geometry is. It's the death. It's bye-bye globe. The moment you started telling us that you can't see a geometric horizon, that was the end of the globe. That was the bye-bye moment for the religion. You, you're asserting well, geometry you, proves the globe. So you need to do geometry. Draw a straight line to you're tangent points. Are you, Nathan? You're denying refraction, are you? I, I, I hadn't mentioned refraction. I mentioned a geometric tangent point that you can't draw a line to. You're telling us... In order to do geometry, you don't need a straight line. And the justification is because you've only got a bent one. Here we go. That's what happens in the, the atmosphere, Nathan. The light bends, don't you know? So you can't do geometry then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, rumpus, rumpus. Oh, dear. I hope you all realise in the audience just how bad the situation is. I mean, it's only been six and a half months since the black swan dropped. Been Euclid. I talk about curves quite a lot. Share your pain, bitch. I'm telling my audience how dead your geometry is. Now, we've got the answers from you here. You've only got bent lines. <laughs> geometry requires a straight line. That's called a tangent. You haven't got one. So you can't do geometry. So your assertions that Earth's a sphere of geometry are dead. Dead as a dodo. It's all over but for the crying. You claim the curve, don't think Yeah, yeah shout it at me. Shout it through Discord. I'm not allowing that to reach my audience, you fundy idiot. <laughs> I'm summarising how dead the geometry is. No tangents. <laughs> no curve points to draw them to. It's epic how dead the globe really we is. Can, we can't see it, Nathan, but we measured it. <laughs> we can't see it. It never can be seen. It only exists in the maths. But I'm going to be capable of drawing a tangent point to it. Oh, can you really? You've got a straight line. No, we don't need one. Only bent ones. <laughs> no geometry then. <laughs> this All funny. lines are bent on a globe. <laughs> Rumpus stated there that uh, both times, he stated two times, that there was going to be a 90 degree tangent. That would be a horizontal tangent. That would be from the top of a mountain to the horizon. Because that wouldn't be 90 degrees. Oh, you be quiet, Rumpus. Oh, he's, his mouth is running more than Niagara Falls is flowing water right now. <laughs> got verbal diarrhea. You're done, Rumpus. Yeah, I don't know. It's just Listen Rumpus him, in the Discord server I mean, not allowing any conversation like to take place from this point on. Anyway. That, that's pain you hear, folks. That's the pain. He's sharing his pain. He is. I, I heard him and everyone say, you can't see it. So then how in the world do you measure it if you can't see it? Do you think curves feature in geometry, Nathan? Come on. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> Treat everybody to an answer. You know, he confused himself so much in that pat, that little spiel that he almost started describing the apparent horizon as the horizon you don't see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if anybody heard that. <laughs> I was just like, wait a minute, he's getting confused. Okay. No, 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 no. He was playing a switcheroo game. Like, nah, that's not the ball, one cop in, it, in the other and constantly switching around and hoping that he won't catch on. That was a nah, trick. He, he can't play that three-card money over here. <laughs> that's not possible. But he well, can but, try. But since the gym yeah, yeah. horizon, since the geometric horizon is a thought Hell. experiment, it can never be seen. Does geometry exclude curves? We want to know. Everybody How do you have a 90 head? degree tangent from the top of a mountain to an horizon? Come on, tell everybody you said whether curves can be geometry. Come on, spit it out there. Who, who is be he talking to? I have no <laughs> idea. What I did was I, I, I lowered his volume, just so you know what just happened, so that people could appreciate what goes on in the Discord server when I close the line. So essentially for the entire time we were having that conversation, Rumpus doesn't give a shit. He's just going to talk non-stop because he's lost. So the only tactic, I pointed this out a couple of shows ago, is to continually talk to not let the audience know that there's been a concluding point made, a point where he's lost, in other words. Now, the point that he lost was where he said he didn't need a straight line. That's what geometry absolutely requires. A tangent is a straight line. Now, he needs it and hasn't got it. So he's lost. 
So what's he going to do? Well, he's going to talk incessantly through everyone and make demands of us and spew. Yeah, that's their only tactic. Now, I found that quite amusing and I wanted the audience to at least get a little example of what he basically does to shut down communications. Because once he's lost one of these points, he can't possibly let the audience know that. So he must cause chaos. <laughs> yeah, that's going to work. I've been here for four years. No, nah, mate. What I'll do is I'll summarise that you need a tangent to a point you can see to do geometry. And when I peg you on this and you say, no, I don't need a straight line. Yeah, no, you might not need a straight line for your fundamentalist globe belief, but geometry does. <laughs> it requires one. You just haven't got one for your little globe fundy faith that reifies the horizon into a physical edge. Now, I'm going to start poking fun at you globehead morons. You've got an edge. You idiots, you think you can see the edge of the earth? Oh, unless I point out that it needs to be an edge. And then you say, we can't see an edge. We can't see a geometric horizon. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, but it used to block boats and buildings, didn't it now? <laughs> and now it's a real can't problem. See it. <laughs> they, can't see it, but they can still measure and calculate it. Wow, it's it. really over. Right? The way you just summarized it, it's over. Yeah, they're so dead. Yeah, but, the model maybe is maybe dead. Maybe he was being honest, though, because he was saying he doesn't need a straight line. Well, yeah, because in his model, straight lines go, going to touch something that we don't see anyway. So you don't need a straight line. You don't need the thing you're not going to see because you're not going to see it. <laughs> so what's the straight line going to touch anyway? <laughs> it's dead. How do you have a dip angle? Go on, bro. How do you have a dip angle from the top of a... Sorry, how do you have a dip angle from the top of a mountain down to an horizon below it that's 90 degrees? How do you have a 90 degree dip angle? And they draw out a 90 degree from their zenith. So you stand at a point, you draw out 90 degrees and say, right, that is going to be an imaginary horizon. It's got multiple names. But that's, the zenith is something that if you draw a line yeah. out the top of your head, if you're standing completely vertically and you draw a line yeah, upwards, yeah. yeah, 90 degrees to that would be an imaginary horizon. Well, the dip angle is the difference between that imaginary horizon that you drew at 90 degrees and the horizon that you actually see. Now, that's under the assumption yeah. that you can then derive geometry from that, i.e. the R value, because it's on the assumption that that horizon that's being looked at is a globe edge. And unless you point out that that physically can't happen and is beyond the geometric parameters, and then it's suddenly never capable of being seen ever until you point out that you absolutely require it. That would be a tangent point, physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon. You need it to do geometry. <laughs> it's game over, fundies. Your model's untenable. We've been telling you for six months. Your globe has run into a corner. There's no way out. Yeah. Yep. Scary. Scary cat. Over the moment Scary he dismissed cat. Neil deGrasse Titan Tyson. He did say that, right? He said Neil deGrasse Tyson is wrong. Exactly. Right. There's a whole bunch of super chats. <laughs> he started to it off with that. That was great. <laughs> Just going to shout out a whole bunch of super chats. So, shout out to Cleary. He says, Tenth Man used to have nine brothers, but seven, eight, nine. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> what an appetite. Beautiful, beautiful. Excellent pun to round it out to. Thank you very much to you, you, Cleary, for the joke and for the super chat. Really appreciate your support. Also, shout out to James Richard. Everybody is Truman. They believe they're in a world they're not, even if revealed. Like Truman, they will be set free. Rumpus denies the truth and prefers to be Truman such as air is not the atmosphere quote thank you very much indeed james richards for the super chat also another shout out to james richards i was hoping you would read my previous super chat i'm, I'm reading it right now or i was a moment ago uh, thank you very much uh, for the super chats it's plural to james richard thank you very much indeed for both of them also shout out to retro bill he says man i freaking love this show <laughs> thank you very much indeed for the super chat retro bill Can I uh, read something? I'm sure you're from, capable. Uh, from uh, Rumpus's uh, guru, the one that he that he emailed with and got corrected on looming is now super looming. You know who I'm referencing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, none other than Andrew Thomas Young right here. 
Numerically, the radius of the Earth varies a little with latitude and direction, but a typical value is 6378 kilometers, or about 3,963 miles. If H is in meters, that makes the distance to the geometric horizon. Notice, not apparent. He says that makes the distance to the geometric horizon 3.57 kilometers times the square root of the height of the eye in meters, or about 1.23 miles times the square root of the eye height in feet. Even Andrew Thomas Young is thrown in the Neil deGrasse Tyson trash can by Rumpus. Right on. By the way, kudos to Arwin, because he spat this whole conversation with his uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson holding a beach ball example, getting us all to reify that horizon into a physical geometric sphere edge like you do. Yeah, I didn't oh, really realize that. see oh. the curvature of the Earth from two million meters above this yeah. beach ball. Yeah, I loved it. That it, stuff it is flat. I posted that in Master B for you if you need to go to it. The the what this heading with a trajectory and tangent point. Well, that was uh, previously, but the next one is the quote from uh, Andrew Thomas Young. Have you put it in ball vistas as opposed to Master B? No, Master B is still loading though for some reason. Oh, okay. No worries. I'll stick it at once it comes. What I was all right. Go, go on, Brian. What I, what I was trying to say earlier. Uh... Sorry, I was trying to say earlier that the the baller is talking about how the you the how it's the horizon is refracted when you're down low because and you can't see it where it's the geometric horizon because of refraction when you're so low to the water, right? But you have to go high to see it. Would one of them care to show me where the horizon is in Mark Brett's two hundred and seventy five mile world record long distance photograph is? Because that's supposed to be halfway across the, the water there. They got that backwards. The they got that backwards too, because there'll be more refraction up higher than down lower at the same elevation, because you're going through more density gradients. You freaking retards, sore rat retard. Exactly. Uh, hold on, I've got to put a caveat on that as well. That's absolutely correct in their paradigm. So according to them. When you're looking out, we have to apply refraction because they have this standard terrestrial refraction, whichever flavor of word you want to use to call it. But let's call it standard refraction as that's the most recent vernacular that's been used by Rumpus. So based on standard refraction, we're assuming that light is going to be bent because of their justification for 7 over 6R, that would be terrestrial or standard refraction, is because it's going through different density layers. Well, why? Well, because the Earth's a sphere and therefore there's different amounts of atmosphere as you look over that sphere edge as it bends. Well, as you go higher, that effect is far more pronounced because you're looking through more layers according to them in their rhetoric. Now, we're not going to assert for one second that that's actually anything to do with actual refraction. This is just their rhetoric and their excuse for their rhetoric, which is 7 over 6R, assuming the radius and then assuming light bends around the radius. And atmosphere is an oxymoron. Or qualify well, that as well. How about qualified. Atmos Cube? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, I qualified on the last is an oxymoron because Atmo means air. Air is gas. Sphere denotes shape. Gases have no shape. Thank you. So how about Atmos Cube? Or just Atmo. Nope. It's just Atmo. Yeah. I like Atmos Cube. Was Rumpus, Rumpus on earlier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, off, we got we, we, we've, off. we've pegged their tactics now. So when when you get to a concluder, conclusionary point, if that's a word, they'll obfuscate it so hard, so fast, because they don't need the audience knowing that that is actually a conclusion that's been reached where they lose. So round and round they go. And we used to entertain it round and round we go. It's like, yeah, sod this. This is the end. Why would I need to go back to the start of this conversation again? Say again. Say again, DJ Neo Shaman. Oh, got either an open mic or an issue. Mic or. I'm gonna have to pop you on mute, DJ Neo Shaman. I'm really sorry. Okay, before you go on, my question was: Did he provide 
Einstein's field equation, the solution for that, for the tides of the earth? Of course not. Can't be done. <laughs> that, that was not the subject of today. <laughs> but we, no, we he didn't. Forgot about that. No, he did not. Over. <laughs> Thank you, Owen. <laughs> You're my little mic button. <laughs> <laughs> The, the closest thing out of you. So Will Rumpus has to get the. Uh... Go, Brian. Go. Sorry, go on. I'm talking. To go, someone. Brian. Go. Go, Brian. Go. Okay. Okay. Go, Brian. Go. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Rumpus has to. <laughs> Rumpus now has to get uh, a photograph of Polaris from ninety degrees uh, from uh, sorry from zero degree degrees below it, and I has to. He also has to come up with uh, the field equation that explains the tides. Yeah. Yes, that's Excellent. correct. Uh, he also has to model out the Isle of Man from an observation that was taken by Anthony Riley on his belly at the beach. At <laughs> 2017. <laughs> not, I'm not even kidding. That still hasn't surfaced. 99% done, though, apparently. <laughs> Boy. Of course, these things won't be laboured by their side of the argument. They'll be very swiftly forgotten about. Well, they are backtracking on everything since uh, the Black Swan. Black Swan. We're watching an implosion, Tenth Man. It's it's all crumbling around them. I mean, it's it's maybe it's bad. My part, me sitting back and watching it burn is kind of just like <laughs> sweet revenge, right? <laughs> Having been poked at for the last four years, five years, however long it is now, um, <laughs> you know, watching their model just burn before my very eyes. I I'm not going to lie. I'm taking quite a lot of pleasure in this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nathan, I got a really good comparison to the situation with the ballers. Go ahead. Have you ever seen the, the movie Eric the Viking? No, but go ahead anyway. No, really? Okay, well, it's about Eric the Viking supposedly going to, yeah, to uh, over the a journey over the sea into mystical, mythological lands of the Nordic religion, and it's a really fascinating movie. It's kind of, uh, it was among other Monty Python movies of that time. So if you haven't watched it, I definitely recommend you watching it. They also have an edge of the earth, by the way, in there. It's really fascinating. Uh, but there is a. a a, a core component they move to an island a mythical island where everything is all peace and then there's a legend on it that any if anybody ever uh, got hurt on that island like if singular drop of blood would fall then the island would sink so the situation that this really reminds me of is all the people coming together sitting on their island that is sinking because somebody stabbed somebody like from the vikings they they're reckless and then the island is sinking, and they're all singing together. Tita, tita. No, High Brazil is definitely not sinking. Uh, I don't know. Anybody seen Eric the Viking? Right. No, good example. I'm glad you got it in just before the end of the show. One last shout out to Rakia Life. He says, What is light? I'll go on moot while I figure it out. Geometry is easy, globe is dead. Thank you very much indeed for the Super Chat Rakia life. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you first and foremost to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. If you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering Streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. As I say, unfortunately, if you're watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. Another massive thank you to both uh, uh, today's Super Chatters and likers and sharers and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on the Premiering Stream and I'll see you all in the next video. like the band on the titanic still playing as that shit is going down
That's what they sound like and feel like to me. <laughs> well, yeah, I like exactly that. What happens with High Brazil? They just don't know what to do and they just decide to pretend it isn't going on. So everybody's just singing while literally their heads are going underwater and their hair is starting to float and all that. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, in that that's movement. A, yeah, but, that's a, but, <laughs> but at least the people on the Titanic, the band on the Titanic is honorable. Well, that's because it was well orchestrated. The people from High Brazil were honorable. They were just <laughs> really dumb. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> right, there was a late super chat, so I'm just going to do a quick shout out to Unitox Femme, even though we're going to go on the after show. But there we go. Rumpus together on uh, Rumpus together on CNN with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, please stop saying that. We can't see, Curve. You are wrong. I'll debate you here if you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Unitox Femi. That sounds like when Rump that time that Rumpus said we need to we need to talk to the physicists and get them to stop telling people that gravity is not a force. <laughs> Seems like they want to actually control and change the narrative in real time. It's pretty funny. Well, he wanted to go right to the refraction, apparent horizon, when oh. the question was uh, the geometric horizon. And he doesn't want to touch that because you can't see it. So if you can't see it and it doesn't exist, and it's a thought experiment. How can you ever measure it? How can you ever get a radius of your model if it's never been measured? It's it's such a killer argument. It's crazy. Yeah. What? What, what's thing it, is, what's why this did old... they decide to start saying we can never see it? I I, I would get if they tried yeah, the to assert we could see it sometimes. You know, obviously that's not going to work. Black Swan, because if it's refracted, it's not geometric. But why why would they why would they say we could never ever see it because we have atmosphere? Did they not understand how bad that is? or Chocolate, still... I'm glad you said that because I've been thinking about any other observation of any other physical thing you can measure even if it's refracted. You get, what do you mean by measure? Measure the distance to or measure its uh, parameters? I'm saying... Yeah. I'm Either. saying that if an actual thing exists and it's being refracted due to atmosphere, it doesn't take away from the actual thing actually existing. So maybe on another day when the, at, the Atmo, I don't want to say sphere anymore because that was a good thing you said there, uh, Atmo is different, uh, there is no refraction and you could know the distance or measure it, but the geometric it's a thought experiment. It's never existed because we're not on the globe. No Atmo me, the most without Contano. For me. No Atmo without Contano. Perfect. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the but, gas pressure without a container in slang. <laughs> but the most it's Latin. Thing is because oh, it's Latin. Three, three years ago, three years ago, you had a ships going behind at the geometrical horizon. No, they are not going anymore. Yeah, apparently the uh, geometric horizons. Do you know it's how many debates about anymore? ships going has no geometry the geometric in there? All I have to say is sphere lives matter. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they were never any sphere to begin with. Anyway, I found the clip, by the way, if I can play it. Or a part of it. No. Are you going to push this movie on us again? No. Yes. No, do not play it. No. Okay. Okay. Well, I posted it in uh, in Ballbusters too. You can show you me the frame that. that you've got paused and just you know, oh, add it on screen for a second. Yeah. Well, it's no use if I can't let you hear the voice because it's really about what they say. Yeah. What but... they say is owned by someone else, though. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> well, from '98. No, 89. Right. Are you dyslexic? Why? 98, 89? No, that, those are numbers. That's right. Did you, did you Not speak? I am. 
Did you speak with numbers or with voice? I just said it the wrong way around, okay? Getting dangerously right. close so, to a personal attack on Arwen right now, just for your no, information. But no, I'm, I, I said it the wrong way around, which is Yeah, I that said. happens sometimes. Very rarely, though, because I get a lot of practice. But in Dutch, the way we order right. when, we, we, when we say it is the other way around. That's right. No. You're right. Yeah. In Dutch, everyone yep. pays equal amounts here. <laughs> People might not get that reference. Going Dutch means splitting the bill. Yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I never do it. I never pay a bill. I haven't had much tests uh, of it. You don't uh, sound happy. It doesn't sound like anyone's paid half the bill when you go out. <laughs> <laughs> and so Arwen's like, I only ever have a salad. That bastard with the steak always goes Dutch. Well... The thing is, I really never go out and get dinner at restaurants or anything because I'm usually the one making the dinner. So, and so I don't make, for it. So. <laughs> so you make the dinner at the restaurants? Is that what you're saying? Classic no, after show talk, home. folks. Classic, classic after show conversation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you you want to <laughs> know about my dating life? No. Negative. No. <laughs> in that case, while. if it's going there, if it's going there, show that stupid Viking video. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid Viking video. It's not stupid. <laughs> yeah, compared to it's your really dating life, I want no, to. No, he made the same point. Oh, we made a good point with that. It was basically the Titanic. You know, the the band on the Titanic is the same example. Yeah, but they knew they were going down. The band well, of the, the Titanic. from High Brazil know they're going down as well, only ah. they're just making it political. Hold on. Not oh, to I mean, believe it. I've just seen the objection and now it's glaring, right? Oh, both In both examples, they're looking around and there's a hole in the ship or there's blood been poured on the island and everyone's acutely aware, it's overtly obvious, that the island or the ship is going down. And what Quantum Erasers just said is no. <laughs> they don't know the ship's sinking. Now... They they refuse to, according to Arwen, think that the island's going down. But in the Titanic, they do know it's going down. Okay, so it's like a going under with the, the ship last music moment or something, or no? It's two, two okay. different examples. It's just so what a you're false saying is the, the people on the island are in Move denial. On. Okay, I don't know. So the people hey. on the the people on the island are in denial. And, you know, they're kidding themselves that, that the island's not going down. Delusional. Whereas the people on the boat, the band, they know full well. They have resigned themselves to it. So it's a very different set of circumstances. And QE said it right when the first example came up, which is to say, no, the people on the boat are honourable in what they're doing, whereas the people who are delusional <laughs> on the island, not so much. <laughs> I like to Agreed. offer a, a rumpus commentary. It's actually a refracted going down called sinking. <laughs> uh, don't mention sinking I don't think they're arguing that it's refraction causing the appearance of the island sinking but that would have Arwen, been why else. do you fall for all my little puns <laughs> I don't it just seems like that because it's because of refraction you just fell for that one No, I didn't. The, it just seemed like it because of refraction. Oh, is is the gradient in Discord? Can he come on? Oh, please, no. Oh, yeah, Chikey's okay. in there. Chikey! <laughs> if no globe horizon, no horizon at all. There is no horizon on a flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like him. I know. Yep. Where should be the horizon, flat Earth? There you go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so why do you that? say, Chaiki, why do you say if no globe horizon, no horizon at all? Why do you throw the baby and the bathwater out? I just asked a question. Did you notice no, you no said one it. answered? Did I'm you notice quoting no you. one answered? I'm quoting you saying if no globe horizon, so you made it a globe horizon, then you said, well, if I can't have that, then no horizon for anybody? Right. No soup for you. No horizon for you. 
No, I Why asked you, you where that, is the Chikey? horizon? Where is your horizon? Uh, is, what's uh, happening uh, here, Chikey, me? is he's trying to establish whether or not you appreciate why you would come out with that statement. We all know why you'd come out with that statement, but we're trying to establish if you know why. I'll tell oh, you where my horizon so do, is. After you think you I make a Nathan. statement without knowing why? Well, like, like I say, we're trying to establish that. Why, why would you assert that? Assert what? That, we, <laughs> that unless we were on a globe, we wouldn't necessarily have a horizon at all? Simple geometry. Simple geometry, right. So you understand that that simple geometry would be in side view without perspective accounted for? Ergo, you, you can draw a line between one point and an observation or observer, draw a line between the two in simple geometric terms and write any value you like on that line. So you could write one million miles and still draw a line between those two things, ergo no horizon. Mm. But that's only because perspective's been hijacked in the mathematics used for a globe. So no perspective, no horizon, not no globe, no horizon, because the globe utilises geometry. No, didn't say that. No, no, I'm saying it. I'm I'm telling mainly my audience because I didn't dream for one second that simply explaining it to you would mean you would understand this. But yes, orthographic view, you said it's simple geometry. Well, yeah, that's simple orthographic side on looking at the side of your own head and drawing a line between you, the observer, being viewed, which is an impossibility in reality. You don't get to see the side of your own head. But you on the left-hand side of a page, a building marked as 100 foot on the right-hand side of the page. Now, by doing it that way, the 100-foot building you guys describe and ask us why 30 feet is missing from the bottom of it, well, it's 100 feet regardless of the distance because 100 feet doesn't account for perspective. That's angular size. The angle to it is changed with distance. But 100 feet remains the same on the right-hand side of the page when you simply draw a line between you, the observer, seeing the side of your own head and the target. And as I say, you can write any value you like on that line of sight, even though you're seeing the side of your own head and the target not changing, with distance based on its size, reducing its angle. Well, none of that's accounted for. So in that scenario, you don't have a horizon on the flat surface with a line between target and observer. But that's only because you've turned the view of your world side on and looked at the side of your own head and ignored perspective. No, I haven't ignored perspective. No, but the curve maths has, leaving you with this worldview. So you will see a line in the distance far, far away. I don't care, but you will see everything. Everything is there. In so why does it look take horizontal? A telescope, take a telescope and bring it. All right. You, you, understand, does... you understand that there is a resolution limit to a telescope, though? Yes, there is. But you you do. Oh, that's wonderful. And and that would be in the curve maths, would it? Or would the curve maths exclude this by turning it 90 degrees side on and excluding all angular relationships by giving things actual sizes like feet and inches when they don't change with distance? So even though you understand that the angular resolution of the telescope would affect how much you can see of something at a given distance, this is completely ignored in the curve maths because it's 90 degrees side on and a 100 foot building will always be 100 foot in that depiction of side on view. We call it Muppet vision because you can see the side of your own head. So you say telescope cannot bring back things that are 10 miles away? I asked you earlier if you understood that a telescope would have a limit to the resolution. And you said yes. Yeah. Now you're asking me a question that implies that you don't really understand that at all. That you said yes when you meant no, I, didn't, I don't understand. No, that there is a I limit to how big a something... Limit. And now you're talking, of course, because it's something being highlighted that you don't understand. Yeah, you, you seem to confirm that you understood that there is a limit to you, things you can bring back. You, and now he's talking through me again for the second time because it's me highlighting his ignorance. So it needs to be talked through. I'll try a third are time, Chikey. I'll try a third time. Why are you third, talking, third Chikey, attempt. when Nathan's talking? Yeah, cause because he's a wanker. He's they're called wankers. They're people who are in pain. And because they're having cognitive pain with the idea that their maths that excludes perspective is somehow basing their reality worldview to tell us that we wouldn't have a horizon if we weren't on a globe. No, the only thing that intersects your point of view in Muppet vision is a curve. And if you exclude it, there's nothing intersecting your view. 
because you can draw a line between target and observer and have the target represented in a value that doesn't change with distance. That's Muppet Vision, orthographic view, the view used in the curve maths. Now, if you understood that as you look through a telescope, there is a limitation to the amount of information it can resolve based on the angle of view, the angular resolution limit. Now, if you understood this, you'd understood that at a given distance, even in a telescope, things will still disappear if they're too small. Now, that's excluded from the curve maths, leaving you with an idea of a world that wouldn't have a horizon if you took away the curve. No, what's actually happened is curve is just a hijacking of the effect of perspective a limitation to the angle of things in the distance. This picture, for example, has got a limitation to the angle of the bottom of these buildings in the distance because you're looking over a deck. Now, the angle isn't limited up or left or right, only down. Therefore, you've got a much more limited angle to the stuff at the bottom, forcing it to disappear first. Now, that effect has been called Earth Curve. And it's been represented in side view without the effect of perspective being accounted for. You said the uh, math pretty many times when you talk. For one who can convert meters to kilometers, I wouldn't mention. Was there a point to that? Was that a vague, pathetic attempt to do what Rumpus does that and just ask a vague math. question that means nothing at the end of a demolition of his argument? So that what, we can't dwell on this for a little while or have you concede? Just a vague nonsense? Uh, that, that was an Ad Hominem, uh, uh, Nathan. He Talking said, for one who can't convert the meters to kilometers, he said, referencing you. I oh, see. It was an Ad Hominem attack. I see. Yeah, so just called you stupid, ignorant, yeah, idiot, when, when you know can't what, prove your glow, I'm might as well just attack the man. Right? Those, things, those things are on tape. Nathan, do not know to convert. Sorry, Unfortunately. Sorry. So literally, you are just going to attack me because you, you've you yeah, realized you're that... You're ignorant. You don't know no, you anything. Are, you are going to talk through me to attack me. Yeah, I said it on the last show. I won't swear quite so badly this time. These people aren't very nice people. So we've had a fairly civil discourse. I've explained to him, because he asked, why he would assume that we wouldn't have a horizon on a flat Earth. That's a stupid statement. Now, it's been broken down without any ad hominem, without me pointing out how stupid it would be to assert such nonsense. I haven't necessitated that particular route. I could, because it is moronic. I'd have a justification for describing his as moronic with the example of an assumption that we wouldn't have a horizon because his worldview has been hijacked, turned 90 degrees side on to remove all aspects of perspective. Now, he claimed he understood what telescopes did. He didn't. Otherwise, he'd appreciate that the angular resolution limit is excluded when you turn things side on and represent things with feet and inches. Now, that's an argument, a civil discourse. And his rebuttal to that is tell me that I don't know how to convert feet into meters or something because he's got me on record where I've made a slip of the tongue. Correct? Nobody's allowed to make mistakes. It was Me, meanwhile, mistake. he believes he lives on a ball that yeah. possesses no curvature. So there you go. Especially you, Nathan. And, and yell that the uh, mumbling now, mate. What, what, what about accepting that angular resolution limits ignored in the curve maths? How about you comment on that? Angular resolution is ignored on curve map. Yes, that's what I said repeated back to me slightly slower. Can you comment on it as opposed to repeat it slower? Why do you say that? Where is it? Why do I say that? Demonstrating admirably to an audience that he hasn't listened to a word I've said. This is all on tape. Your ignorance, your total lack of comprehension of things that have been explained only moments earlier has been recorded. We've got it on tape, Chikey. Just how dumb you are to fail 
to comprehend something that's literally been broken down for you only five minutes earlier. You realise this is being recorded. Your stupidity is being documented. The fact that you can right. even ask me why I would assert that, given that you've had to distract away with an ad hominem when I've explained exactly why, given that the angular resolution limit observed in a telescope and detailed in the documentation when you buy the telescope is ignored by turning the view side on, representing what you see with your eyes with the side of your own head in the frame and the thing you're looking at, not in the distance, but on the right-hand side of the page, represented with feet or metres that do not change with distance, like the angular size would. That's how. So why do sheep disappear behind the horizon? Uh, that would be because their angular resolution's being breached, or because there's an atmospheric condition that blocks the bottom. There's a whole number of reasons. I don't need to justify this. I don't make any claims about what the horizon should or shouldn't do. However, you, who, let's be honest here, a complete moron, has told us that if the Earth wasn't a globe, we wouldn't have a horizon. Now, that is amongst the stupidest things any people have ever said here. But you feel that in rebuttal to me pointing out precisely how our reality has been literally turned side on to remove all aspects of perspective, you would ad hom me about a slip of the tongue and then ask me how you've hijacked perspective and called it Earth Curve and how things would disappear from bottom up when I very specifically detailed an example with buildings in the distance and their angular limitation versus the deck that you also didn't listen to. Moron, deaf, thick, idiot. It's all being recorded. Now, this isn't a slip of the tongue. This is you being a demonstrable moron. So how does the angular resolution... So what? Now time for a questioning of me. You're not holding any cards. You're not in the privileged position to ask questions. I'm making statements that I'm asking you to respond to. Not with a question, but with an acknowledgement. There is no perspective in Earth Curve Maths. How do you feel about that? Maybe give us your opinion on your feelings. Maybe if I appeal to that, you'll actually respond to it. Yes, we don't need it. You don't need it? You're comparing Curve Maths to photographs, and you think you don't need to account for something in the photographs. That would be angular resolution limits and perspective. Yeah, you do. You're a moron. They absolutely are real and do take place in reality. Unlike a curve of an Earth that's an edge that blocks boats, that's never visible and only exists in maths, that's something we definitely don't need to concern ourselves with. Perspective's real, however. So, we do need to worry about that. It's real. Makes yeah, things get too small to see. Real. I agree. So when so you agree, so you understand that the curve maths are useless because they've essentially hijacked the effect of perspective. So you understand as a globe-believing fundamentalist zealot that your curve maths is just a joke, dead, debunked by a black swan. No, I don't agree. Oh, right. Well, you seem to understand that it doesn't include perspective. That alone debunks the idea that you can use this geometry... So when I change elevation, my angular resolution changes because I... Widen your angle versus the deck. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, the effect would be called foreshortening. This is... This is news to you, is it, Fundy Fuckwit? Because basically about five minutes ago, everything disappearing in the distance was caused by Earth Curve getting in the way. And according to Rumpus early on in the show, we can't draw a straight line to a geometric tangent point to do geometry. So this whole idea of a geometric earth curve edge getting in the way of stuff is nonsense. Especially when you consider that the very maths that's asserting that things we see in pictures are being blocked by a geometric earth curve edge, when you take into account that that geometric earth curve edge has been turned side on and doesn't include the effect that would make things disappear in the distance, that would be perspective, as you've conceded here. So the whole thing's Dying, imploding, and we're sat here laughing and watching as the model burns. You understand that, Chiki? I hope so. Six more months, maybe. Yeah, if you could only give me the, the formula to the change in angular resolution versus... Yeah, you can look it up. It's called the Rayleigh Criterion. Write it down. <laughs> Rayleigh Criterion. Have you got a pen? 
interestingly, a couple of people backed me on this recently, including Dr. Professor Moronic Phil. He backed me. So he made a little video all about how real the diffraction limit was and explained it with the Rayleigh criterion. Oh, brilliant. I left a little comment for it and put a community post up. Dr. Phil, whatever his name is. I just call him Phil because I don't believe he's got any accreditation. And if he has, it should be stripped of him, especially as he's describing water vapour as not a gas when he's supposed to be dealing in hydrology of some description. That's his profession. Well, he should be stripped of any accreditation. The guy's a moron. Nevertheless, he went through and explained how real the diffraction limit was. Ignored my point that it's not in the curve maths, but backed me that it's real, therefore should be accounted for. It isn't. They've actually taken that effect and called it Earth Curve. I look he also backs up that that Earth Curve is presupposed because he I says that's how we come up with models. We presuppose them. But yeah, it's a pretty good hostile witness. Chaiki, can I ask you a question? When boats disappear bottom up first, is that due to perspective or a physical Earth Curve? Physical. Oh. Haven't been keeping up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Black Swan, mate. So, yeah, you should have you enjoyed this show before the Black Swan came out. Yeah, mate. At least then you might have had a, a shot at that argument. But even your own side has given up the physicality of your model. So you just saying, oh, it's physical. Dead. Done even conceded by your own damn side. So what are you doing? Who's hey. Did he answer? I didn't hear an who answer. My, who, he was who is pondering. my own side? Thank you. I'll ask you again. When a boat disappears bottom up, when you're looking at it, is that due to a perspective or is that due to a physical earth curve? Something physical. So let me hear you say that again, or let me repeat it back. You think that when boats disappear bottom up first, it's because they're going over a physical earth curve edge, correct? Mm, no. Speak up. There is something. He's only trolling. He's only trolling. And the boats, I'm not trolling. I don't want to say what you want me to say. I say what I, w I want you to answer the question. Is it the physical earth curve that blocks the bottom of boats as it goes away from your sight, or is it due to perspective? It's not due to perspective. It's due so to that, that only leaves one option. It's between it. you and an object without shape. Do you, are you saying it's 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 the geometric edge of the earth getting in the way is that what you're saying it's the water so not earth curve water geometry not, a shape. No, <laughs> not, not earth curve then well welcome to flat earth curves. nice that you know it's not earth curve getting in the curves. way good good excellent curves don't block view it's an object optical oh no, right object. Uh, hold on sorry did you say optical Object. Can you stop stuttering? Maybe try and make form words, sentences. Hmm. Object. What I'm going to kick it? you out. If, if I get one more one word answer out of you, you're useless to me. You've become a retard. Oh, boy. Yeah, try to well, speak it, up, it, man. Put some bass like in your voice. Be, Put your chest it, in it. Yeah. <laughs> Say it with your chest, man. Come on. <laughs> the hell's wrong with here. You? It's <laughs> the water between you and the boat. All right. So, so, so nothing to do with the earth curve, then? It has to do with the earth curve. But what, how so? How so? Is You've been asked, curve? is it perspective or, or is it... You? You've been asked, is it no, perspective, it's not perspective or is it earth curve? Nathan, no, not perspective. What then? Earth yeah. curve? Like the geometry asserts. Yeah. Is that uh-huh? Very quietly. 
Yes, you're correct for a change. Oh, so the geometric horizon's getting in the way of boats and buildings again, is it, Chikey? It's the water. Yeah, you've said that already, you little weasel. Is it earth curve geometry? Yes, it is I'm earth curve geometry. Well, no, it's the water. Horizon. I'm saying it's the water. <laughs> the water's water, not, no. not earth curve then. Okay, Chikey, when boats disappear bottom up, is it due to perspective? Is it due to earth curve or is it due to water? Due to object. Object this time will be the water that is between you and the ship. Do objects have oh. geometry? Yes. Okay, how does an object between me and another thing prove earth curve? Mm, because okay. on flat earth there is no object between you and the ship according to perspective Mike just shut up I'll, I'll just mute him there you go pick somebody else no worries we'll, we'll just have a, a few summaries from some of the, the globe side of this argument a geometric horizon we are not going to see the geometric horizon no one's claiming that we see physical geometry it's not a visual horizon of course what mr oakley will say is that we presuppose what the earth is the shape of the earth well yes <laughs> well yes <laughs> yep <laughs> What is well, water vapor is a gas? <laughs> well, yes. That is the dumbest thing I think I ever heard. Are you joking, Professor Phil Belland? What a joke you are! And with that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the Nathan Oakley or Nathan Oakley 1980 primary stream audience for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out nathanoakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video.